open and you ain't even pulled up to fuel because you've been out of the truck and you're blocking everything dude this this ain't looking this ain't looking great for me man all right well they got blood in there what do you know man there's blood in there levi are you going with daddy on the truck you are baby y'all know what time it is baby we're freaking herspocking bro we're freaking herspocking let me tell y'all something man this video we're gonna talk about five things i hate about truck driving man so i'm gonna lay it on you man but first we gotta get this thing going baby we gotta get a truck wash we gotta go to deliver this load i relayed it from olathe i'm here at the iowa 80 truck stop so we're about to rodeo ranch it I know some of y'all wanted to make fun of my cowboy hat, but that's all right, bro. Because I don't even care, dude. Because I'm too busy rodeo ranching out here. <laughs> all right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go across the street. What's up, big boy? Huh? Say hello to everybody, Poseidon. Say hello to everybody. He's being such a good boy. Yeah, he's a big boy, but he's a good boy. We're going to head over here to this... Uh, Streaking beacon, baby. Then from there, we're gonna head on out to uh, our delivery. It says we're 27 miles away. So, we're gonna work on that. I'm trying to get that done. First thing that I absolutely hate, cannot stand about truck driving, is just some of these people, <coughs> at these shippers and receivers and security guard shacks and everything are some of the most miserable people you'll ever meet in your life. As a result of some of these people being miserable, bro, they're gonna take that out on you. Cause if they're miserable, they want everybody to be miserable and that's just how it's always gonna be. So be prepared for that. There's Iowa 80, the world's largest truck stop in the United States of America, Iowa 80. Holding it down, baby. It's pretty cool inside. I've done videos inside there before, so if you don't know what it looks like in there, man, go back on some other videos or something, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I like this blue beacon, bro, because it's never, like, super busy. I don't know what it is about this one. It's a little bit different. Just, it's not very busy. So, but anyways... In the trucking industry, you deal with miserable people who, and it's not just shippers and receivers too. There's a lot of truck drivers who are absolutely horrendous, miserable, hate their existence. Bro, don't be one of those drug dr truck drivers, bro. Get inside yourself, pump yourself up, you know, remember what you're doing this for i don't know man but just like bro don't be miserable bro i think that's the thing i hate the most is just like in truck driving bro it is a backstabbing industry everybody hates everybody and everybody's all up in this man and they're treating this person bad and this person bad i tell you what bro i get tired of dealing with that kind of stuff bro 100 percent Oh yeah, baby. She's good and sexy. Woo! You know what this means, baby? We're freaking Hirschbach warriors, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys a picture of where I'm gonna be. All right, I'm, it's, I'm looking at it right now. And as you can see, this, this ain't looking this ain't looking great for me, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just kind of like, ah, ah, I don't know, man. You know, so I'm a little bit nervous about it, but we're going to go down here and I hope they're nice people, dude. That's the main thing. I hope they're nice people. So y'all seen it now. It's, it's just looking like a tight back, bro. I don't know what we're going to do here, but let's get it done, baby, because we're rodeo ranching. We're out here freaking getting it, Hirschbachin, 24-7, dude. All right. 
Psych yourself up for a hard back. That's how you do it, baby. Let them know you're the freaking legend out here, man. I tamed the wildebeest. All right, bro, that's enough, dude. Cut the camera, let's get going. All right, baby. This is the facility right here. And around back is where we wanna go. Man, this is just, this is just something else, bro. This is just something else, man. How am I gonna do this? Uh, I think there's a way to, okay. Okay. Looks like there's a spot down there. I'm gonna turn left up here and then I'm gonna straight line it back, man. All right, we're gonna straight line back. Oh my goodness, dude, I have never. All right, man, this is what we gotta do. It's what we gotta do, man. Going across the intersection, man. Just We're just going slow. We got our hazards on. And uh, you know, this isn't like a super busy town, but you know, you just go slow when you gotta do stuff like this, man, backing up on a, on a city street or whatever, man. You just go slow and steady wins the race, man. Slow and steady wins the race. And uh, you don't want to hit anybody. So there's a car. I see a car. He's coming up on my side right here. Over here, man. Yeah. There you go, buddy. I'm glad you got around me. While I'm backing up in, you know, into this parking spot. I don't even know where the dock's at yet. I'm just trying to... I kind of looked at this on Google Maps earlier, man. And... Uh, kind of figured out that this is probably what most people were doing on these docks over here man so it's all good so there's no parking signs everywhere over here but it's whatever man hey here's the big trailer i think the docks are going to be right back through here yeah looks like there's one one dock right there so let's hope they just get us unloaded in a timely manner that's all we can really hope for so he's pulling out let's go figure out let's go figure out where we're supposed to be here you know we're 45 minutes so early we're pretty we're pretty but we're a little like an hour and 15 minutes early so let's figure out where this office is and get inside Smells disgusting. Straight up, it smells disgusting. So I want to give you all an explanation of how exactly, what exactly happened. So, I came down here, pulled up through here, and then I straight lined back all the way. You can see where my blue dot is. That's where I parked, and then that's where the docks are right there. Let me tell you something, dude. Got in there, the guy was like, oh, he's like, did you get set up? Did you, did you get, uh, are you parked out there where everybody else is parked? And I'm like, yep pulled to the left backed it all the way up he said yep yep that's what you needed to do he's like some people can't figure it out i was like bro i google map everywhere i go man i gotta look at where i'm going if i've never been there before i'm looking at where i'm going so we're parked here they're in there right now like busy like getting all the stuff reorganized there's room in the freezer so it's the life of the reefer game then after i get this unloaded i'm going to joliet 
where I'm going to uh, drop off an empty and then from there I'm going to come back and um, drive over here to, uh, to Rochelle and pick up another load and then deliver to Walmart. So uh, got a little bit of a night drive ahead of me man. Depends on how fast they get me unloaded on this one. So they seem pretty reasonably fast. This guy was in, you know, he was just really concerned that I was going to have to wait for them to, to unload me. But my appointment wasn't till 3. So I'm here, like I said, about 40 minutes early. 45. I was here 45 minutes early. So, uh, but yeah, man, we're going to kill it, bro. So there you go. Somebody backed into the middle dock. And uh, luckily for me, it was a local truck. So they, got, they started backing him up. Or started they started unloading him then we come around here I had to back up I had to back it tight around this corner right here and back it all the way up man and there's a dumpster over here on this side don't you even worry about it little lady cuz old wild beer gets it done baby wild beer gets it there baby you already know we're killing it listen man second thing on the list bro of things I hate in truck driving bro is freaking fueling up at the fuel island bro because let me tell you why i'll give you i'll give you a synopsis man because people are freaking idiots dude i don't know what it is about truck drivers but some of y'all man for real some of y'all some of y'all truck drivers man you don't you can't figure it out bro some of these trainers need to do better about explaining the fuel island like bro when you're done fueling you pull up to the line if you need to get a drink if you need to go like get a pack of M&Ms it's cool bro he'll get you a pack of M&Ms no problem if you need to go in there and take a poop if you need to go in there and order a McDonald's sandwich that's gonna take an hour to get bro bro just park it somewhere man you know and so for me dude I just don't fuel up unless it's late at night or early in the morning dude and you know what I've parked in the fuel island and gone in there and took a shower bro just so you know at 2 in the morning when there's nobody else at the fuel island you get what I'm saying bro so learn the etiquette of a f of the fuel island bro just learn the etiquette of it bro like don't be getting out of your truck prematurely to go into the store to block a lane that doesn't like you know what I'm saying bro like the line will be backed up people will get out of their truck and by the time they get back out to their truck like the lines already moved up and the fuel islands open and you ain't even pulled up to fuel because you've been out of the truck and you're blocking everything dude I don't know bro it gets me frustrated because people are so stupid when it comes to the fuel island so just want to communicate that clearly for y'all oh yeah it's a tight the tandems are slid all the way to the back see it says no parking right here but you know what I got to say bro I'll tell you exactly what I got to say we got to do what we got to do to make it happen you know what I'm saying so if we got to park here then we got to park here bro so, uh, let's shut this off. That's been running a lot. Okay, we got three quarters in there, so we don't even need to fuel it up. That's a positive, man. Let's shut these doors. <sighs> All right. Well, they got blood in there. What do you know, man? There's blood in there. Because what we got to do is, man, I'm going to call. If they've got a washout in Joliet, then I won't need to get this thing washed out. But there's a potential that they might have, they might not have. So. Let's see what we got going on here, man. Thank you for calling the Hirschbach Motor Lines Tyson Power Only Department. A representative will be with you shortly. Um, I've got blood in this trailer and I'm supposed to take it down to Joliet, Illinois to the Tyson to drop it off and then bobtail up to Rochelle. Um, do you know if they got a washout in the, um... Yeah. Hillsdale. Is it Hillsdale that the, do you, so I, I mean I was talking about the Joliet plant. Where are you supposed to take it? To Joliet. Where are you to, take it? to Joliet. Oh, sorry. Um, no, they don't. I mean you'll have to find one along the way somewhere. 
Ottawa. If you go that way. Okay. All right, man. I just wanted to double check and confirm with you, man. I appreciate it. You bet. Bye bye. Uh, well, we got to find a washout because there's blood in the trailer. And they don't like no blood in the trailer, do they, Poseidon? They don't like it. All right. Here we are in Joliet. Yes, sir. Dropping off old crispy strips. Oh, yeah, baby. Let me tell you something. I don't feel like sliding tandems. But we're freaking sliding tandems, baby. We're going to dolly her down. He looked at this gauge for a long time. It's right at three quarters. I don't know why he kept looking at that gauge for so long. You hear that air? That's how you know it's good. Once you hear the air flow out, that's how you know you're solid. Yes, sir. Good and golden, baby. Now I'm gonna teach you one other thing. While I got your attention, we have automatic fifth wheel release. So if you look on here, boom, it's released. Now I'm gonna show y'all something. All right, I never fully pull out from underneath it because I've had dolly legs give out on me and fall back on my back tires, man, on my drives. Okay, so I'm always very cautious, bro. Very cautious when I drop a trailer, bro. There's no need to rush, man. That is for sure. So, we're at here. This isn't really a Tyson plant. This is like a big Tyson customer or something, man. I don't even know, but I don't know. It just doesn't, I don't think this is a Tyson plant. And they made me text to check in here. I had to check my empty in. But boys, we're heading out of here. We're going back up to Ro Rochelle, because that's where my load picks up tomorrow morning. It's supposed to be at 8 a.m. Yeah, baby, rise and shine. It's money time, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> Dude, check this out. So, parked here Bob Tail last night. Check out what we got up there, man. Freaking, freaking Planet Fitness. We're about to get this fitness game on, man. No excuses today. I'm tired. It's eight and a half hours. I've been in the sleeper berth. So, fixed dinner last night. And then got up after eight and a half hours in the sleeper berth. And we are going to get a workout in. It's leg day. I don't feel like doing it. I'm not in a good mood this morning. But we're about to get there, bro. Because you got to put the work in to get your soul right, bro. You got to put the work in to get your head in the right space, man. It ain't going to come natural, bro. Ain't nobody else going to do it for you, bro. You got to do it for yourself, bro. So let's get in here. Let's freaking get this done and get it wrapped up so we can rodeo ranch on out of here, bro. <laughs> let's get it done, man. Let's get it done, baby. Oh, yeah. got that man easy peasy man easy peasy we're going to door 23 which is 2021 20, 22 so just a couple one down I'm gonna wait for this yard dog to get out of my way and then I'm gonna back up in there this yard dogs taking his time man it's all good oh yeah perfect setup perfect setup actually I ain't gonna say it's perfect, but I ain't gonna say it's perfect, but it's pretty freaking good, man. So
So adding up the hours here, if I get unloaded at this Walmart with some semblance of time, I'm gonna be home. Positive outlook would be nine o'clock. Negative outlook would be 12 midnight, 1 a.m. So Saturday night, late Saturday night. So that's how it goes, man. Erratical schedule, erratical schedule, bro. One of the things I hate about trucking. So this leads to the third thing on the list, which is you're gonna have an erratical schedule. You're never going to have the same schedule every week. And I know there's gonna be people out there that's gonna comment like, well, I do, I got the same route. And like more power to you, but the majority of regional drivers or OTR truck drivers, you're not gonna be what you think it's going to be it's not going to be the same schedule and you know i got home at midnight and levi's mom dropped him off uh, at my place at 4 45 the same morning and that's just what we had to do to make it work and uh, i don't like that but it's just it's just been a really hectic week and this is what it was it took five hours to unload and so you're just going to have to do with what you can with the time that you have and so it's just going to be an erratical schedule and it's always going to be like that it's just trucking is that's how it is it's an erratical schedule nobody cares about your schedule nobody's trying to be concerned about your time off or your home time nobody cares okay i'm just going to be honest with you nobody cares at these shippers and receivers so um that is the third thing i hate the most about truck driving is the erratical schedule your home time is just going to be all kind of all over the place and that's just what it is man but anyways me and young wild are gonna go to the grocery store yeah are we going to the grocery store yes say it say yes yes so we're gonna go to the grocery store and that leads into my fourth point that i hate about truck driving is the food at these freaking truck stops <gasps> oh, i got you i got you there you go. You're looking at $150 in groceries. What do you think about that, Levi? What's your word on it, young wild? Zing! Levi, are you going with daddy on the truck? Yeah. You are? Did you already talk? Did you already talk to mommy about that? Yeah. You did? And she said it was okay? I think Hirschbach wouldn't let you come. I don't think Hirschbach would let you come. You're too young, buddy. You're too young. Yeah, he's driving. Are you done swimming? Yeah. You ready to go back? All right, let's go back. Hey, young wild. Do something funny. <laughs> Do something funny. <laughs> wild over here playing playing with some uh some some magnetic shapes that's what we're playing with isn't it we're playing with some magnetic shapes right now so fourth thing i hate about um trucking is the food at truck stops dude it's terrible bro everything about food at truck stops is terrible there is like one small little island in the truck stop where it has healthy food like boiled eggs salads and it's like these pre-packaged salads that has brown stuff in it and bro it's just terrible so you just have to fix your own meals on the truck and so I eat a lot of like chicken and rice, black beans and rice. I've got pre-made meals. I've got uh, frozen dinners, um, yogurt. You, you guys have seen some of the stuff I've ate. Um, but guys, you, it's so annoying, bro, because you just can't even get a decent meal. Like there, like there are good restaurants out there that are attached to some of these. Like they do have a Denny's and Iron Skillet, and you can find some steak and some get some vegetables and stuff through that. But the food is just terrible, man. And the fifth thing I want to say, because I'm trying to wrap this video up because it's super long and I'm just trying to like, you know what I'm saying. Um, the fifth thing would be <clears throat> parking. 
you know, the shippers and receivers don't want you parking there. And then truck stops have limited parking, especially in the Northeast, man. Just congested, less parking. Rest areas are packed out at night. It is just really, you got to really think to plan. And if you park on the side of an exit ramp, then you're getting a ticket. And then, the, you know, the cops are knocking on your doors. Like, bro, it's always something, man. And so sometimes we truck drivers do it to ourselves. People are like, bro, we don't want truck drivers staying here, man, because you guys just throw your trash out and don't know how to like walk 100 yards to, or you guys don't know how to walk 50 yards to a freaking garbage can to throw your trash out, and so we get banned from parking places. And then you get mad when Walmart doesn't want you to park there, bro. So, I mean, we do it to ourselves, bro. But it's one of the things I hate. I hate the parking situation for truck drivers. I hate it for us because there are... It's just people out there that ruin it for everybody. And man, I, I hate the food, man. I hate the food. You know, I, I mean, uh, last week, I literally cooked every meal on my truck except for one. One meal last week I ate out. And that was because it was a home, like, mom and pop pizza place. And I wanted to try their pizza. So, you know, in order to be healthy and to order to be, like, actually eat some decent food, you have to just be able to cook on your truck and make your own meals. And even I don't even feel like I fully eat like super 100% healthy all the time, but I do my best, man. And it's really hard to do, especially if you're a truck driver. So, um, those are so those are the five things I hate. Now I want to end with this, man, because I don't want you guys to think that I absolutely hate. You know, like I've said a lot of good things about trucking, and yeah, there are things that I hate, but. I also just want to say that trucking changed my life and um, I remember what it was like to struggle paycheck to paycheck I remember what it was like to go into a grocery store and have to worry about you know what you're gonna buy and being able to afford certain things and having like just being able to say like hey me and young wild are gonna eat out tonight and not think about that but um, I knew what it was like man and trucking changed that for me and I was able to pay off my student loan debt I was able to pay off my car like my car it's a 2014 Ford Escape bro but it's paid for dude and when you're driving around a paid for car Merrill, it, it feels pretty good so um, you know trucking's helped me to elevate myself and Hirschbuck's able to help elevate me too like all those things have been good for me dude and um, you know being able like to sit in a truck without being micromanaged and listen to podcasts and gain knowledge of different things like business, finances, history, politics, all those kinds of things. Um, I love that, man. I love that freedom. I love being on the road and there's a sunset in the, in the horizon and your favorite song is playing on the radio and you just feel the, the hum of the road underneath your feet, dude. I love that dude so there's things I hate man but the road is definitely a mistress to me and she always calls my name so y'all know what it is baby stay dangerous out there wild beard out